Whenever I smell asphalt, I think of Marine. That's the last sensation I had before I blacked out. The thick smell of asphalt. And the first thing I saw when I woke up was her face. She said she had fixed my bike. Free. No strings attached. I should have known then that things are never that simple. Yeah, when I think of Marine, I think of two things. Asphalt and trouble. Rip Burger, you're dumber than dirt. Oh, Mr. Corley, if you'd only listen to my plan, my vision. I know your plan, Rip Burger. You're waiting for me to die so you can take over my company. Oh, sir, that's horrible. I am not waiting for you to die. You know I've never liked you, Rip. But you have business know-how and killer instincts that I respect. Why, thank you, sir. But this latest idea of yours, riding up to our shareholders' meeting with a gang of bikers? Who do you think you're fooling? The shareholders, sir. It's good PR to be seen hobnobbing with real Corley Motors customers. What do you know about our customers, Adrian? You've never even been on a bike. Well, you know I'd be on one right now, sir, if it weren't for my destabilizing inner ear condition. Ah, your ears are fine. It's what's between them that scares me. Some boys I could ride with. Step on it. Let's find out who they are. Welcome to Per Ardua's walkthrough of Full Throttle, LucasArts game. Uh, this is one of my favorite action-adventure games, and I know I say that probably about every single game that I put up here, because they're all my favorites, but I honestly have a lot of really great, vivid memories of playing this game when I was younger, and one of the pieces that really stands out to me uh, for this particular game is the soundtrack and uh, most of the it's hard rock and a lot of that uh, it's all pretty much done by the Gone Jackals which is a, a group I don't think they're around anymore I did go out and buy their album and then their second album um, just really fantastic soundtrack the second greatest thing about this game is the voiceover work uh, you have Mark Hamill uh, of Star Wars fame of course who uh, does the voice for Rip Berger and uh, Roy Conrad, who does the voice of the main character, Ben, who, I mean, is just phenomenal um, in, in, in this role. So you have a great storyline, you've got great music, you have great voiceover. Uh, the only, you know, of course, the game is held back by the, the invention of the graphics, where the graphics kind of engine was at that time uh, when the game came out. But overall, really just a fantastic game. Ben? Hmm. You know, Ben, we're broke. Yeah. And if some cash doesn't come our way soon, we're in big trouble. Relax. I have a feeling something's coming our way. Something big. Eh, uh, you better stay out here, Rip. This place is bikers only. <laughs> All right! Who's the guy that drove over my car? What could possibly be taking so long? 
Maybe old man Corley got himself in trouble. Yeah, maybe they took the old guy out back and worked him over with a two by four. Hmm, an appealing notion, but improbable. More likely he's boring them to death with some tale of the glory days. <laughs> but Malcolm, isn't that illegal? Not back then it wasn't. <laughs> so who do you ride with these days? He rides with me. Although I'm sure he'd much rather be riding with your little club. I told you to wait out in the limo, Rip Burger. I thought you might like some help with your sales pitch, sir. Sales pitch? Yes. We've come here today to offer you and your men employment. Mr. Corley requires an escort to the annual Corley Motors shareholders meeting. Does this look like an escort service to you? You would be well compensated for your time, of course. Not interested. It's uh, fairly obvious that you could use the money. Listen, I said we're not for rent. The Polecats are not goons for hire. Not even if it were Malcolm Corley's dying wish? Rip Burger! That does it! I'm gonna... Hold on there, Malcolm. If you don't mind, I'd like to step outside with Mr. Rip Burger for a little chat. Excellent idea. And the doctor says he only has a few months to live. That's bad news for all of us. He's not just a nice guy. He's also the last motorcycle maker in the country. What happens to Corley Motors if he dies? Don't worry. I have a plan. And if you come to the shareholders meeting with us, you'll find out what it is. No dice, Rip Burger. The Polecats are not thugs for rent. If you want to buy muscle, you should go find the Rotwheelers. The old man says it's the Polecats are nothing. Then I guess it'll have to be nothing. Hmm. And that's your last word? That's it. Well, I'd like to make you just one final offer. <sighs> Bolus, take this coat and go get his motorcycle. We'll have to tie up this little 200-pound loose end. <laughs> it will need to look like an accident. That stuffed shirt actually thinks I'll leave him in control of Corley Motors when I go. Boy, is he in for a surprise. Hey, where's Ben going? Your colleague has decided to accept our generous offer after all. As a matter of fact, he's gone on ahead to scout out the route. He did? Well then, let's roll them, boys! Yahoo! So now we know that Rip Burger really can't be trusted, and there's something devious going on here. Uh, so essentially, you are now, you've been beaten up, uh, your bike's stolen, and uh, you're, you're just, uh, you're somewhere, and you're actually in this dumpster. And so all you need to do to really kind of, to start out the game and get out and get going, is to use the hand and on the right panel of the dumpster on the top, and you'll just kick out the top of that dumpster. Once you punch out and climb out of the garbage truck, head to the right, and you'll be in front of the kickstand. And you'll notice your bike is back, hanging out there. So you want to go ahead and hop on your bike. you got to catch up with your gang, find out what's going on, right? Unfortunately, when you get to your bike, you realize that you don't have keys. I don't for the have bike. anything. So you need to figure out what happened to your keys. Uh, there's not much to do. There's not many places to go see at this point, except head back into the kickstand. So that should be your next focus. Go into the kickstand. You can use your hand. Um, you'll note the kickstand's closed. It's closed. So you can knock on the door and try to open it. Uh, they will not answer. So since there's no answer, the open next up. best thing is, I mean, you know, you're a biker. Kick down the door. You're big and rough. And then head right on into the kickstand. And you'll say... I, uh, fixed your door. It was sticky. Look, I don't want no trouble. Just leave me out of this mess. So the only guy here is the bartender. He probably knows something, so it's best to go ahead and have a conversation with him. 
I've never liked nose rings. Me neither, but someone dared me. Now he seems very standoffish, so the best way to actually get him to talk is to threaten him a little bit. And this really kind of, these two motions really start setting the pace for this game of how things are going to happen. So go ahead and use your hands you know what on the bar better on your nose. What? The bar. <gasps> now don't mess around with me. All right, all right. I got your keys, but I don't know nothing. They had guns. They told me to stall you as long as possible. Why? I don't know. I don't know. I overheard them say something about an ambush up the road. What else? Nothing, nothing. Look, man. Here are your keys, all right? Oh, uh, someone did say something about killing you and making it look like an accident. They didn't do too good of a job there. But why ambush the pole gants? I'd better get moving. So, we, the plot thickens. Now, we know there's an ambush. Our motorcycle gang is going to get ambushed uh, down the road. And uh, somebody tried to kill us and make it look like an accident. So, let's hop back on our bike now that we've got our keys. And let's get after those polecats. Now this is your really first interaction. This is a rot wheeler. Ain't you the A number one polecat honcho? Yeah, and you're in my way. Well, Rival motorcycle gang. The when rot, rot wheelers hit the road. We own it. Look, I'm serious. Someone's ambushing the polecats. Someone's ambushing the polecats? Oh heavens! Whatever will we do? <laughs> That doesn't. Come on, kitty. Let's get down. And now you just start fighting. Uh, right now, all you have is your your fist. Later on in the game, you'll get additional weapons you can use for this. Uh, but just keep pushing them over to the side and hitting them with his fist. And eventually, he'll fall off his bike and flip. My editor better print these in color. Now I have to get you some help, I suppose. Oh. Ah, quit moaning. I know someone around here who can fix anything. What are you? I'm a mechanic. And apparently a pretty good doctor as well. My name's Maureen. My name's Ben. Why did you hit me over the head, Maureen? You were in an accident. A reporter found you and brought you and your bike here. My bike? What have you done with my bike? Brought it back from the dead. Sort of like what I did with you. I need a little help getting it finished, though. So now this is Maureen. And she basically just saved your life and is working Who on your you? bike. Go Who ahead and ask remember? her all the if questions that's too you can. Hard, maybe you should just stick with Mo. Do you have a last name? I prefer not to use it. What about you? Same deal. 
Then it's Ben and Mo forever, I guess. This an authorized Corley Service Center? Now you could call this a Corley Service Center, but I don't have the official paperwork. Ah, an illegitimate Corley operation. I prefer to think of it as a renegade Corley operation. Where'd you learn bikes? I grew up working on them with my dad. One summer we did nothing but restore this old hardtail together. I mean, we scrubbed every bolt until it shined. But he took off one day and he never came back. So I switched to toasters. You live in this town? Well, Melonweed's not much of a town. What's left of it is sinking about a foot a year. People either learn to adjust or they leave, which is fine with me. Not a people person? I'm just better with toasters, that's all. You seem more concerned with me than your bike. How's it look? It looks better than it did, but you gotta help me out. The front forks are wasted, so you'll have to get some new ones. And someone stole my welding torch. Can you believe that? I can't finish without one. And last but not least, I patched up your ruptured gas tank, but you're out of fuel and I don't have any. So now Where we know that we to need find all this stuff. You can new forks, tough guy. gas, and we gotta find her welding torch. How am I supposed to find your torch? I don't know. Set up a dragnet. Still can't believe someone would steal my torch. Who around here would do a thing like that? Where am I gonna find new forks? Well, they don't have to be new new, just not broken into little pieces. You could start by asking Todd in the trailer across the way. He runs the junkyard. Where's the gas? Well, there's a whole tower full of it at the edge of town. I have this crazy, irrational intuition that tells me maybe it's worth checking out. Actually, I think I can handle it. Good. I don't have any money to pay you with. Hey, this one's free. I haven't touched anything besides a toaster for so long. Getting my hands on your hog has really been a pleasure. Well, thanks. Don't sweat it. Well. I'll let you get back to work. Let me know if you need any aspirin or anything. Now, before you leave this building, make sure you grab the hose by the exit as well as grab the gas tank that is next to it. You'll also want to go ahead and take a look at the photo that's on the wall there. Who's this? This will oh, be a photo me. of Mo he and her Uncle Pete at, at his mink ranch. mink ranch. When he died, he left it to me. You're a mink farmer? Nah, that place went belly up long before he died. But I still go back there whenever I need to get away for a while. And then head outside. Once you head outside, you'll run into the photographer who oh, basically dead saved dead. you and brought you back to Moe's. Um, you can go ahead and I ask her a bunch of questions yeah, and uh, try worry. to get her. You know, your bike's to. broken. You need to get to that ambush. Maybe she's nice got a car that she can get you, you to the ambush. You want a picture of me bleeding? It's not the blood. It's the way you were, all twisted up like a pretzel. Listen, I've got to stop an ambush. Ambush? Really? Where? I don't know exactly. My crew is escorting some VIPs to the Corley Motors shareholders meeting, and there's an ambush waiting for them somewhere up the road. Um, uh, I, I. Yeah. This is hard for me. I, I need. Come on, man, spit it out. Could you give me a ride in your car? I've got to stop this ambush. You're right. We have to get to the ambush, all right. But I'm afraid I'm without wheels at the moment. How did you get us here? Hitched. Well, I'd better be going. All right, drive safe now. Now you'll want to go ahead and head to the left on the screen. Of course, now that sneaky photographer found out she did have a car and she drives off. So now head left. back to the now left, and that's going to bring up this map of the trailer park area. And we need to find our three main items. Now, if you take a look, there in the upper left area, you'll see a bit of a, a flashing. Um, there's a hole in the ground, and it's it's it will flash red. And now that's the... This is the junk shop up in this area, but that red flashing makes it seem like hmm, maybe somebody's working on something down there. 
Uh, it's possible that that's like a welding torch, maybe? So let's go check it out and knock on the door. Now, this is Todd's trailer, and he owns the junk shop, the junkyard. Who's out there? Hey, I'm trying to do my art in here, buddy. I don't got time to waste on bums like you. Hey, I'm a friend of Moe's. I need... You can try talking to Todd no and see if he'll let you in. You hear me? It was very defensive right off the bat. We didn't even ask him about the rolling torch. What do you want? Really makes us think he's got it. So we're going to have to use some brute force here. Now make sure you kick the door while Todd's there staring at it. That'll knock Todd out. Now there's a few things here we want to make sure we, we get. Uh, open up that cabinet right above Todd. And inside you'll see a little stick. It's actually a lock pick. So make sure you grab the lock pick. You never know when you need the lock pick. And then back behind Ben is the refrigerator. So just kind of mouse it around till you find it. But it is right His over the um, left shoulder of Ben coin is, the, um, is the refrigerator. Make sure you open up that refrigerator and grab the meat that's inside. Because we're going to need that later. And then go ahead and hop on the elevator. Which is where we're hoping the welding torch will be. Since he was working on it. Once you grab the welding torch, uh, you'll be sent pretty much right That's straight to a cutscene of uh, Ben oh, returning the welding torch to Mo. A pair of forks, little gas, and we're set. Now, once you've turned in the welding torch, head back out to the map area, and you're going to see that big tower off on the right in the distance. Head on over there. And that's the gas tower. Now, this gas tower is highly protected. There's a gate around it. There's a locked door. Uh, there's guards. So it's going to be a little tricky in how we go ahead and get gas from here. So immediately upon approach, you see a locked door. Well, guess what? We just picked up that lock pick at Todd's. So go ahead and access your inventory. And get your lock pick out. I couldn't break that. And then lock. go ahead and use a lock pick on the lock to open it up. Now, once you unlock this lock, it, you're going to toss the lock on the ground. Pick up that lock. Don't leave it laying there because you're actually going to need it later on. And then head on in to the gas tower. Now, inside the gas tower, there's a ladder that you can use to climb up to the gas tower. So go ahead and hit that hit that ladder. Oh, we set off an alarm. Uh, clearly guards are going to be coming. We need to get out of here or at least hide. The best object is for you to hide. There's a nice gray cylinder all the way in the back. Move Ben back behind that cylinder. And uh, he'll hide back there while these guards come and investigate the alarm. to run away. Nah, we would have seen him running from the air. He must be hiding up in the tower. We got him treed. Let's go up and get him. So now these two guards just went up the tower and left their bike or their hover machine sitting here. So well, guess what? That's, that's got gas in it. So go ahead, click on the gas tank to open the gas uh, compartment because we're going to go ahead and siphon out their gas. While they're up at the top of the tower looking for you. Once you've got the gas cap open, go into your inventory and get the hose. And make sure you put the hose into the gas tank. And then grab the foldable, collapsible gas tank you have in your inventory. Pull that out and put it right there on the floor. And then you're going to want to go ahead and use the... Click on the... Uh, the hose and use the mouth on it because you're gonna have to start that suction to siphon out the gas. Hey, who's that down there in the yard? It's him. 
get it. Uh oh, where? We've been spotted. Over there. So you'll take Quick. off. You go around the other side. Spill some we'll gas along the, the way. Where'd it go? But you'll take off and you'll be able to get out of there pretty successfully without uh, the guards uh, capturing you. And then you'll head back to Moe's where you'll turn in the gas. <clears throat> oh, good. You get this from the gas tower? Not exactly. Just a pair of new forks and we're on the road. Now head on back to the map, and we're going to head up to the junkyard and see if we can find a pair of new forks. Now the junkyard itself is that larger building on the back left, upper back left, so go ahead and head into that uh, new scene over there. Now once you get here, you'll notice there's a chain on the right-hand side and the roll gate in the front. So go ahead and pull the chain and try to get into the junkyard by opening up that gate. And then go ahead and try to run in. Unfortunately, as you can see, if there's nothing holding that chain in place, uh, that gate is just going to close. What we can do, though, is lock the gate in place by using the lock that we got from the gas tower. And actually what this is going to do is well prevents the gate from opening you can't move the chain then so now ben can use the chain to help scale the junkyard wall and jump on in uh, junk now we're inside the junkyard and there's a nice little pile of parts right there in our eyes view we can go down and take a look at those parts and maybe there's some forks in there So Ben will go ahead and jump on down and investigate those parts a little bit closer. Oh, junkyard dog, as to be expected. Most junkyards have them. Down. Bad dog. So now we got to figure out a way to get rid of this dog. Uh, now, there's clearly also more to this junkyard than just the scene that we're on right now. So go ahead and walk to the right. And you'll see there's a little bit of a crane up there in the back. And that's actually, if we go ahead and walk up there, get an idea of what it is that we're working with. Aha, so this is a cr typical junkyard crane with a magnet on the end of it. And uh, we can use that to, you know, move the, these cars around. And you've got the junkyard dog who's just kind of hanging out there and jumping around on those cars. Well, you picked up meat before, so guess what? We're going to go ahead and head down to closer to the cars and throw some meat into one of those cars so we can get the junkyard dog to jump on in there. So head on back down. To the screen that we were initially on after we climbed the fence and you're going to jump back into the junkyard and then walk east to where the cars are once you head over there grab your meat from the inventory and then throw it into the blue car. Here, Poochie Pooch. Pooch. Now actually get the dog to go we into the car the after the meat. You can actually throw the meat into any of these cars, but you might as well throw it into the blue car because that'll be it's the easiest one. It's right below the magnet. It's the easiest one to pick up. Then head back up to the the outlying area of this junkyard and back up into that tower that controls the crane. Now you can go ahead and control the magnet once you're here. 
the button that you see, that red button, turns the magnet on and off. So go ahead, turn that on. And then you have a lever on the left and one that you already have your hand on. The lever on the left controls the height. So move the lever down to lower the magnet to the car. The magnet will engage, picking up the car. And then you can move the lever all the way up to bring the car up to its largest height. And that's all. That's all you got to do. You can just walk away then. You can move the car around more if you want using the middle lever, uh, moving it around that controls your direction, you know, uh, but you don't need to. Really simple and easy. Now, if you went with a different car, you're going to have to maneuver the magnet, uh, you know, to that car, but uh, otherwise you're fine. So head back down, head back over to that parts pile we were at before where it looks like to be a fork uh, right there in the... Uh, in the parts and you'll go ahead and rummage through them with uh, use your hand and rummage through the parts pile to find your new forks <clears throat> nice forks where'd you find them right next to the knives and spoons well that's it wait outside for a minute and i'll finish you up i'm working on a surprise i hate surprises all right here she comes I cool or what? You're amazing. I should crash that thing every day. So what's the surprise? Oh, just your average everyday pre-regulation destroyer class solid fuel recoil booster. You're serious? Yes. But only the vultures. I have my connections. Now, are you going to try this thing out or not? Hoo-wee. Wish I had a camera. I wish I had some way of paying you back. Just beat it, will ya? Scaring away my regular customers. Bye, Mo. Send me a postcard from the ambush. And away we go. Now we're back on the highway, but unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get too far. Those gas tower guards are all out looking for you right now, and you're not going to be able to get Ooh, down the highway. Climber. He's a sneaky one. This time he ain't getting past us. See him? No. Nope. Keep looking. Well, you'll automatically turn around and go back to Moe's. There's one easy way. We, we've already done it. We've distracted those guards before. Just by setting off the alarm. So what if we head back? Back on our map. Head back over to the gas tower. And all we're going to do is we're going to walk right back into that fence area and set off the alarm again. That'll call the guard's attention to come on over back over to the gas tower, and then we can run back out while they're searching you hear for that? him. He's back at the gas tower. He's got a lot of nerve, that piece of trash. Let's get him. All units, follow me. Those gas tower guards will automatically head back over to the tower, and you'll run back to your, your bike. And now we'll head to a little bit of a cutscene. Like I said before, this is really like a movie that you're ben, kind of interacting with as you us? go. Where are the suits? Corley's making a pit stop. He has a bladder the size of a thimble, man. Ripburger? I haven't seen him in a while. Ben, man, what's the deal? Did you find something up the road? Are we headed for trouble? No. We're in it. Put my head in a basket, cause I'd had a tank full. When she blew my gasket, I surely was thankful. Till I head for the skies up above. It's a woman with wheels that I love. Come on, old man. I gotcha. Now, do something incriminating, like ambush somebody. Aha, the plot thickens. Hm. 
You shouldn't have laughed at me in those board meetings, Malcolm. What a psycho. Gotcha. Hey, look what I found in the bushes. What is that? It's a chokehold. Come here and I'll demonstrate. It's got a camera. I'll get her. No, Nestor will take care of her. You have an important engagement with the rest of the Corley family. Right. But don't forget to destroy that camera. Yeah, yeah. Now then, Malcolm, how about one for the road? Corley? Corley? Ben! <coughs> I guess Rip Berger couldn't wait for natural causes. Just like him to hit a man when his flies down. <laughs> Rip Berger did this to you? Yeah, he knew I was dying, and he knew that my will would put him out of a job. He wants to take over Corley Motors, Ben. Sell it off to foreigners, lay off workers, start making minivans. You understand me? Minivans! Oh. <coughs> minivans? You gotta hurt him for me, Ben. Promise me you'll hurt him bad. I promise. <coughs> I want my daughter to take over the company. You have a daughter? Yeah. And she's a real mechanical genius, Ben. Rebuilt her first carburetor when she was four. Eh, I used to call her the diaper dynamo. <coughs> Find my daughter, Ben. Find Marine. Marine? Marine? Mo is his daughter, the diapered dynamo. Ripburger's way ahead of me. I just hope Maureen can handle herself until I get there. Hmm. Gun, I understand. Why'd he bring a camera? Who does this guy work for? Corley Motors? Nestor, what's that moving over there by that pile? I don't know, Rip, but I think that pile is Bolus. <sighs> yes. Now I remember. You're the smart one, aren't you? There's Mo's shack, but I don't see the limo. Maybe I beat them here. On second thought, maybe I didn't. So you've arrived back at Mo's, and everything, <laughs> you've pretty much missed everything. There's a big pile of debris over there on the right-hand side where uh, one of Rip Berger's henchmen fell. So go ahead and take a look at that debris. And in that debris, you're going to go ahead and you'll find the camera without the film roll because Mo took the film roll. Uh, but you'll find the camera and you'll find a picture, uh, the picture of Mo and her uncle at the uh, milk mink ranch. And if you recall, Mo saying earlier she would go to the mink ranch whenever she needed to get away. So there's a good chance that that's where she is right now. So once you've done that, go ahead and you're going to head back out to that map area, get on your bike, and... So if you head out to the northeast, the road that we usually take, you'll note that you won't be able to go any farther as there's a lot of police action blocking your, the, your path. But there is another road out of this town, and if you move your mouse over right near where the junkyard is, you'll see that it turns into another highway sign, and you can go out that way. That's the north road of Melonweed. Now you'll end up at Kickstand because that's really the that's where you came from. It's the only really direction you can go. Bo, 
Ben! And as you arrive at kickstand, you hear somebody calling you from the dumpster. Over here! You go ahead, look at the ben, dumpster, and no your time photographer Fred will you know, pop out. It's stank in there, but I can't remember a better sleep. You gotta help me. Go find my editor in Corville. Tell him I took pictures of the Corley murder. You got pictures? Yeah, but some thug took my camera. So you don't have any pictures? Well, I tracked the guy to Melonweed, but I'm not going near the place. They kill me! Get my editor! He's gotta get me out of this! Take one of these fake IDs to get through the roadblocks! My career is riding on those pictures! Help me, Ben! You're my only hope! Oh, don't worry. I owe you one. If Miranda's thug is so now the you've got a fake ID that'll place, let you get that past be Miranda's the camera I saw there. But then who got the film? The only problem is that you can't just ride up on your motorcycle to get past there. You need a disguise. You need a cover. So head on over to the kickstand. You note that there's a huge semi truck out front. That guy's probably sitting in the kickstand kicking back. Hey, so killer. let's go ahead and see if we can talk to him. Hey, it's cool. Your secret's safe with me. What secret? Haven't you been watching the news? Once again, our top story tonight, Malcolm Corley, owner of Corley Motors, was found dead at a rest stop just outside the town of Melonweed. Apparently, the benevolent patriarch and CEO was viciously beaten about the head and neck, savagely and without mercy. Police have arrested a notorious outlaw biker gang known as the Polecats. No. With the exception of their leader, who is still at large. Roadblocks have been set up along Highway 9 in an effort to apprehend this dangerous and violent criminal. We've been set up. Roadblocks suck. I shouldn't have left the gang there. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to hear anything about it. You ain't making me an accessory after the fact. Just lay low, man. Now we know that Rip Berger has basically blamed us for the murder of Corley and the Polecats are under arrest. So now we've really got to keep a low profile. Let's go ahead and talk to the trucker. Now the trucker's over here playing this little game with his knife in his hand. If you keep saying to him, let me show you how to do that, you'll actually unlock a mini game. You have to say it a lot. Um... But it will unlock a mini game, and you'll be actually be able to play that. As you can tell, I'm not very good at this game. Uh, you have to move really quickly, and there's not really, and as far as I know, there's not really any like end game to it. It's just a little thing you can do and play around with it. So if you want, keep asking him, and he'll let you play. Uh, you know, have some fun with that. Mainly, you're going to want to go ahead and talk to him, see if you can convince him to let you ride in his truck. The only thing that's going to work on him is handing him the fake ID, which is an FBI badge, and that will get him to allow you to travel with him and get him past the roadblock. Oh yeah, you sure are good at that, buddy. You're pathetic. That's your truck out front. I need a ride. I look like a cabbie to you. Get lost. They're not letting anyone through that roadblock anyway. Not even truckers? They turned me around, said police business only. Pigs. Good talking to you. Friendly folks you get in here. And it's not what you'd call an I'm okay, you're okay person. Ah, shut your hole, quo hog. Here. What's that? Fake federal investigator ID. Could be of some use at one of those roadblocks. Ever hear of this place? Uncle Pete's Mink Ranch. I remember there used to be some sort of weasel plantation or, or something up the road. Down Highway 9 on the other side of them damn roadblocks. I used to pick up mink meat there real cheap and sell it to school lunch programs. <laughs> that was a good scam. So how about a ride? 
What if they search the back and find my bike? It's buried in a pile of concentrated fertilizer powder. <laughs> Trust me, no one's gonna dig through that crap. Now you're gonna ride in the engine compartment. The engine compartment? Hey, I smuggle stuff in there all the time, and most of it's worth more than you. So stuff your carcass in there quick, and we might hit that mink dump by morning. Hope you're better with a stick shift than you are with a knife. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Smells like he's got a fuel leak. I love engine fires. Sorry, sir. Only police vehicles beyond this point. I'm with the Fed, Jump. Check it out. Huh? What's this about? Undercover agricultural sting operation. What's in the back? Fertilizer. All right, move along. Hope you rude get your man. <laughs> And if the truck driver will drop you off at uh, Moe's uncle's mm -hmm. we mink moving. ranch uh, so you can check out and see if she is there. Problem with your truck? Uh, <laughs> loose hose and nothing big. Uh, I, I already pulled your bike out. It's sitting right over there. Well, nice knowing you. Gotta hit the road, you know. did have a fuel leak, and he took my fuel line to fix it. That trucker's gonna die for what he did. Now, when you arrive, uh, the gate to the main area will be locked, so go ahead and walk into the shack. And here, basically, you're just kind of, like, looking around for stuff. Um, check out the pillow. If you, you look at the pillow, there'll be a tire iron under that pillow. And then you can also try to open the footlocker at the base of the bed. The locker will be broken, but, uh, hey, that tire iron you just picked up is a handy little tool to help break into that, uh, footlocker. Now, you will find a hose in the footlocker, which will be helpful because Emmett stole your uh, fuel line junk. to fix no his. I can use on my bike. I don't think and then, of course, Mo runs off, and you snap on your oh. fuel hose and take off after her.
this cargo is worthless. We have been tricked, my brothers. Back to the cave. Hmm. The place looks deserted. Maybe the boss was wrong and she ain't coming here. She's coming. We just got here first. That means all we have to do is sit here and wait. Okay, so now that you've got control again, uh, we're going to set up a little trap here for the two numbskulls over there. What you want to do is go ahead and use your tire iron on the wheels of the cargo base. That's going to really loosen up well, that's all that, uh, that trailer. That up now. And while you're over here, make sure you grab a handful of fertilizer. Put that, you just stick it in your pocket, I guess. <laughs> you don't put it in a container or anything, but you kind of have that. We're going to need that for coming no, up soon. Just take a look. And then just go ahead and uh, use your hands on the trailer. You're going to give it a big push to dump it over. It's going to create a bigger mess. Uh, but we're doing this um, because we're going to use a little, little trick here to trap um, the two knuckleheads down there. And as you saw in that cutscene, you know, as Emmett's truck went over the bridge, it blew up because of the cavefish bomb that was thrown onto it. We, we essentially, ultimately right now, we have to get over that gorge in order to, you know, catch up with Mo and, and stop the shareholder meeting and everything else that's going on. Uh, so, we, that's one of our, our main goals right now. So once you've got the trailer dumped over, make sure you go ahead and get back on your bike. What a mess. You're going to go back north on this road, back up to the Mink Ranch where uh, Nestor and uh, the other knucklehead is hanging out. And once you pull into the parking lot area at the Mink, you'll immediately just swoop around and we'll do another cutscene uh, with those two boozos uh, following you. Now, you are in control of Ben at this time. You can move him Look back and forth on the road. Just make sure you stay straight on this road until you get past the fertilizer that we've dumped all over the road. And then another cutscene will come in. Nestor's fault. Get in quick. I have a plan. We're going to lure the Corley remnant out of hiding with a bike. Boss, she already has a bike. Yes, but this one she worked on with her father. It's an emotional thing. Don't try to understand. Now hurry. So now you're back down at the end of the gorge there. You're going to go ahead and turn around and come back up and you want to pull over when you see Essentially how this part works is you're going to see different signs pop up on the left and right hand side of your screen and you'll see stop signs pop up at different points. You want to stop at where those two bozos crashed their car because they're, we're going to search their car for some, see if there's anything we can take from them. So once that stop sign pops up, click your button and you'll immediately pull into a little short cut scene where you pull in and then you can go ahead and get off your bike. All of the vehicles in this game are basically hover, with the exception of your, your motorcycle. So in order to get over that gorge, you're going to need a little bit of extra help. Uh, so go ahead and use the tire iron on their car to pull out the hover device. And then you're going to go ahead and use that hover device on your bike. And essentially this is just attaching a little bit of extra to your bike that will help you get over that gorge. We're going to need a lot more to get over that. We're going to need, you know, some kind of ramp to really shoot us up, and then we're going to need probably a booster pack as well. Otherwise, we're not going to okay get enough speed. for an aftermarket part. So now's a good time to save your game. If you haven't been saving, um, we're about to enter, go into a bit of a um, kind of
kind of a battle sequence right now, and uh, you don't die, but uh, it's helpful to walk. save your game here in case you get annoyed with it, because uh, it can be annoying sometimes. 